Hey everybody, the purpose of this little video is to get you uh, a set of solutions, a Monte Carlo set of solutions to the quote unquote, how likely was it if the deck we had was fair that we saw five black cards come out in a row? So, uh, end quote. So you guys had a claim that we actually mathematically proved in class that we should have taken number one on average, uh, was it two pulls? I think it was two pulls to get a red card on average. Uh, and then we calculated the chance of seeing what we saw, which was 3%. So those two things taken together, number one, on average, it takes two pulls. And number two, it's about only about a 3% chance of seeing uh, it take that many cards and still not seeing a red card led you guys to believe, huh, I think that deck might be rigged. So one way of looking at it is, is me to turn around to you and say, well, okay, so you say that there's only a 3% chance of seeing the results that we saw. But I can turn that around and say, yeah, but it can happen. And you can say, yeah, but it only happens 3% of the time. And which makes me, again, go back to 243 and ask you, what does that mean, 3% of the, of the time? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over here to Excel. And I'm going to let this thing keep randomizing while we're talking. Now, it was pretty funny is when I flipped back over to Excel, the first result I saw up there was five black cards. But what you're seeing here is, and the, the quiz explains this pretty well, is you're, you're seeing the result of actually pulling five cards out of a fair deck of cards. And Excel is keeping track, and the, the quiz explains all this. Excel is keeping track of how many red cards out of those five, and then it's keeping track of the cumulative, the cumulative occurrences of that number of red cards. As a matter of fact, let me make this a little bigger so it's easier to see for you guys at home. Ba boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's a little better, isn't it? Yeah, it's much better, actually. So let's keep it randomizing. So now you've got the number of red cards here, the cumulative occurrences. So you'll notice that you're getting essentially this beautiful binomial looking curve. And, and honestly, you, you should be getting a binomial looking curve because this is a binomial experiment. You either get heads, excuse me, you either get red or you get black with 50% chance of each. Um, the most likely should be near the average of two and a half. That should be the average number of red cards that you see in five pulls, uh, two and a half. Um, and it should be symmetric and roughly bell-shaped. Uh, so there's that, that set of results right there is fairly typical of what you should see. So now the point is, is how does this tie into the three, oh, three, excuse me, 0.03125 or 3.125%? Well, the quiz leads you through a series of steps. The first part of the quiz is it asks you how many trials did you run? So you ran over 10,000 trials here, almost 11,000. But you know what? Let's just go to 11,000 just to, just to wrap it up, put a bow on it. Oh, look at that. The 11,000th trial. <laughs> was five black cards and if you were paying attention so was the nine thousand or the uh, ten thousand nine hundred and ninety ninth <laughs> that is too funny oh that's hilarious anyway um these are the cumulative results over eleven thousand trials now um the next part is and how many of those trials did you get all black cards well, we got 364, two of which occurring at the, at the very end there. So you got 364 results out of 11,000, which means the probability, 364 out of 11,000, the Monte Carlo probability is 3.3%. And of course, it's going to change as we, as we do more trials. That probability will change and then we'll update and so forth and so on and so forth and so on. As, we, as the numbers change, these numbers will change. And I have to actually go up here and file... Sorry, it's not updating automatically. I need to make it update automatically in order to be happy. There we go. Now it'll start updating for us. It's not updating for us. Why is that not up? Oh, I know why. Equals that divided by, whoops, divided by that. My, I put a number in, not a, not a, not a dynamic. There it goes. There it goes. And please notice, if you can take a look at what's going on right there, the, uh, it's actually a little bit higher. The 0.033076 is above uh, 0.03125, which would be the actual true probability. And you might be noticing that, that that is fluctuating right there. It's trying to stabilize. So eventually that will stabilize down if you let it go far enough. Um, so the question then is, how different is it? Well, there's a couple ways you can measure difference. You can simply do a pro uh, difference, literally mathematical difference, equals that minus that. So there's the, there's the difference between them. And that, that, of course, will change as the number changes. 
<coughs> notice how it's starting to shrink as we're starting. Well, it, it fluctuates, but it's beginning to move towards shrinking as we uh, have more trials. And if you're really, like I said, if you really want to impress me, you can do that difference divided by the true probability, which will give you a percent error. So we're about 5% in error right now. And that'll, that'll continue to shrink as the number of trials increases. I mean, it functionally has to shrink because it's going to start getting closer to the actual true value of, um, of the, uh, the binomial distribution of 0 0.01325. So, and it's doing a pretty good job of shrinking right there. It's, like I said, it's moving around, but it's moving towards uh, a 0% error. And I think we've answered all the questions now, haven't we? Let me take a look. Uh, we've gone through how many trials, how many saw no red cards, four decimals of precision, true value. Take a screenshot. That's all you had to do last was, was take a picture of this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, trial right there, or the scorch gorgeous graph right there, and uh, yeah, I could look at this all day. It's kind of, it's fun stuff. It's how mathematics is done quite a bit in the world these days. So anyway, I just thought I'd get you guys, look at that, it popped back above 5% there for a little bit, and that's pretty slick. So anyway, the idea is you can run enough trials and you can get you can get some really, really, really cool results without actually having to do the mathematics that would be, could theoretically be fairly tedious. So I hope this uh, gave you a nice glimpse into the world of Monte Carlo mathematics. I always enjoy doing it. I try to use this tool whenever I possibly can. Um, and you'll use it more and more in this class as I, I do have some pretty fun stuff planned for us to, uh, to do. So you take care. We'll see you in class. And uh, yeah, have a good weekend.